In my kitchen, I've got these laminate counters that are in pretty good shape. They're definitely out of date and they've got this ugly fake wood veneer, but I wanna update them instead of replacing them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is shut the power off at the breaker and then we're gonna tear out the cooktop, the sink, and get these counters prepped for concrete. I just needed to unplug my electric cooktop and take out a couple of set screws and then I was able to pull it out. And quick FYI, if you don't wanna remove your appliances, you can just mask them off and clean up any concrete later. That's really easy to do. Nice. I just needed to make a couple small alterations to my existing countertops. I'm gonna be installing a new 36 inch wide cooktop and I only had a 30 inch one to begin with. So I cut a three inch opening on each side so it was still centered. My new cooktop is also just a little bit more narrow than the old one, so I added this reinforcement strip of wood to the back of the opening. That way, it's got plenty of a lip to set on. This piece of laminate started to separate from the countertop material from water damage around the sink, so I used some hot glue to set that back into place. Then I put 150 grit sandpaper on my random orbit sander and I scuffed up the surface of this laminate to make sure that the concrete is going to adhere as best it can. And the concrete that we're using is this right here. It's called Henry Feather Finish. It's the standard for projects like this, but it's actually a specialty concrete made to go underneath new flooring. Basically, if you have a low spot in a wood, concrete, or any other material subfloor, you would use this to level it out first. It sticks to basically any material, dries fast, and like the name implies, you can taper it out to a really fine finish before it gets grainy. This product is also really great because we're gonna be sanding our skim coat between coats, and this doesn't have any aggregates. It's super fine. And this is basically what we're looking for. We want it to be thick like pancake batter and not be runny or drip at all. And I'll be testing out two different options to smooth it out. A drywall tool, just your classic drywall joint knife, and a concrete finish trowel. Both of these are basically the same thing, just a flat, sharp metal edge and should work fine. You can see that my countertops have a bull nose on the front and that lip is raised about an eighth of an inch. So that's how thick I'm trying to build this first skim coat. And if you can't build up as thick on your first coat, no worries. The first thing I'm noticing is I probably should have used a power mixer or just spent a little bit more time because these dry clumps are getting streaks in my concrete. Once you have good coverage, you'll come back and just screed everything flat. And if you have any voids from a dry clump, don't worry about that, because we'll backfill it with the second coat. Ooh, lucky. And one thing you need to be mindful of is how fast you're moving. This feather finish will dry in the bucket in about 15 minutes, so if you don't use it in time, it will go bad on you. This reminds me of the drywall skim coat. It was looking really bad on the first coat also. I just gotta remember, don't stress it. We're gonna fill in all of these voids. Okay, so that was a little bit hectic. I need to mix another bucket of the feather finish. This time, I'll be a little more prepared. On the second bucket, I added a little bit more water, but I mixed more thoroughly, and I got a lot less clumps. You could mix this by hand and still get good results, but a paddle mixer is recommended. Now I watched a lot of YouTube videos before I tried this project out and a lot of people do a crazy thin first coat. They basically just slurry and spread it with their hands. And I'm not saying that that's not a reasonable idea, but I was able to build a really good first coat. And I think the thicker your concrete base is, the better you're gonna be long-term. And after I spread concrete on the tops of all of my counters, I worked around all of my edges and the openings for my appliances. For this, I used a mixture of putty knives, my trowel, and my hand. Turns out it's really good for working with contours. And I followed the same steps with the backsplash. And this is one of the cool parts about this is you couldn't really form a concrete counter with the backsplash, where it would at least be really tough. So we'll let that cure for a couple of hours and then I'll be able to come back and sand it smooth. But while we wait, I wanna give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Ariat Workwear. So throughout today's video, you've seen me wearing some of my favorite Ariat Workwear pieces and I'm gonna keep wearing them for the rest of this video. Just about every day of my life, I wear my eight inch Cascade work boots. They look amazing. The eight inch ankle is great for keeping me stable 
and the sole is slip resistant and non-marring. Area denim is really high quality and I'm wearing the M8 modern cut with a straight leg. Area workwear is reinforced in all of the right places. I've also got a lot of different colors of the Rebar Cotton Strong t-shirts. These come in regular and big and tall sizes and they have a drop tail hem that has been preventing plumber's crack all episode. So you can thank Ariat for that. And if you wanna learn more, make sure and follow my link down in the description where you can check out my list of my Ariat favorites. It includes the stuff I'm wearing, more shirts, jackets, shorts, shoes. Honestly, just check it out. Plus, there's a link down in my description where if you sign up for Ariat's email list, you can get 10% off your first order. I couldn't be more proud to promote Ariat workwear. I wear it all the time in my regular life and in unsponsored content. So thank you to Ariat. Thank you all for watching. Now let's get back to this project. The thing that's special about this concrete, the Henry Feather Finish or similar products, is that it doesn't have aggregates like rocks and pebbles in the mix. So you can sand it down for a really flat finish. I loaded up 220 grit on my random orbit sander and I just worked to get down the high points. I didn't wanna sand down to get rid of any marks because that's gonna take away a bunch of concrete. Instead, I just wanted to take care of the ridges and high points. With Coat 2, we're not as focused on building a layer. What we want to do is fill in any low spots or voids and get this super flat. On this coat, I had a lot more downward pressure on my trowel. I was basically using it like a squeegee to make sure I backfilled any low parts, but I wasn't building up where I didn't need to. Coat number two dried in about 15 minutes because the concrete wasn't thick anywhere in particular. This piece isn't quite dry yet, and it works great for the edges. It's like a piece of wax. I found that it was really easy just to spread the concrete on by hand and then flatten it out with a tool. So that's what I did on my backsplash and this piece on the side, as well as my entire counter for a third coat. Like I mentioned before, I learned quite a bit from previous YouTube videos that I watched and I'll leave links to those down below. After a while, I kind of ditched the trowel and drywall knife and I just started using my hands. I let the second coat and that slurry dry overnight and this is what we're left with. Overall, we are super flat. We've got a little bit of a raised edge right here that I might have to sand with the belt sander. We'll see what 80 grit on the random orbit is able to do. But across the rest of this surface, it is really nice. This time when I sanded, everything started to look good. I didn't have a bunch of low spots in my counters that I was revealing. Instead, I was coming out with a really flat finish that was starting to polish nicely. I was really pleased to find that an 80 grit sanding belt on my belt sander was able to get rid of that raised problem area on the right side of my counters. Awesome! And from there, I came back with 220 grit to clean it up. I used a 220 sanding sponge to get all of my roundovers, my edges, and my corners, and this worked really nice. Just be careful not to sand too aggressively because I actually exposed a little bit of laminate in places. Oh, and this concrete is workable enough that you can shape it with a chisel. The good news is we are not gonna need to do a third skim coat. The bad news is I did sand down to the laminate in a couple of small places. So I'm gonna come back and spot check all of these areas and make sure that I've got good coverage and then also sand those spots back. Then I'm gonna go back through the sanding process with really light pressure, making sure not to expose more laminate. If you masked off any sinks or appliances, counters or walls, make sure and score the edge of that tape with a utility knife before you peel it away so you don't mess anything up. And this is the reason you don't have to take out your sink necessarily. You can clean up with a chisel or a wet rag easily. This is the concrete sealer everyone seems to be recommending online and I got pretty good results. I bought it from Amazon and I'll leave a link down below. First, it called for me to saturate my concrete counters so I sprayed them down and then I mixed up 50% water and 50% sealer. This is gonna help it soak into the concrete a little bit better and on the second and third coat, we'll apply it full strength. The directions recommended that I use a clean cloth to apply the sealer, but I used a foam brush and I got a few brush marks, so it might be better to use a cloth like the directions recommend. Either way, you wanna make sure that you use a sealer with a top coat, not just a penetrating sealer. That way your concrete is as protected as possible against stains. 
And with that, our DIY skim coat concrete counters are done. But before we check out these afters, let's look at these counters before. Now they weren't the worst, they film okay, but in real life, it's just cheap laminate with a fake wood veneer. And now, let's check out these afters. So there you have it. I love these DIY skim coat concrete counters. To the average person, I don't think that they're going to know that this is a skim coat and not poured in place. To someone that knows better, they'll be able to tell, but to most, these are 1-800 Super Pro. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and learned something from it. Make sure and click like, comment, and subscribe down below. And the real test for these counters is just gonna be time. They're either gonna hold up or they're gonna break. And if they do break, I'll make a video as soon as they do, that way y'all know. And no matter what, in one year, I'm making an update on these countertops to let you know how they hold up. So in 365 days, make sure and check your subscriptions feed. Let me know what you thought about this video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below with that notification bell. And if you wanna see the whole Joshua Tree cabin renovation from the beginning, the link will be down in the description. Thanks a ton for the support, and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Bye.